Hi folks, take a look. Five axis d -berine infusion. Uh, there's a bunch of really cool stuff here. What I love is just how absolutely easy it was to get the results I was looking for to deburr some occluded or, or inside or frankly otherwise difficult uh, features to, to deburr. So I wanna show how we de deburred some easy features on this, the harder ones with the, a Harvey lollipop cutter, uh, and then talk a little bit about what's going on behind the scenes here as to how we have this relatively new toolpath infusion. There's four different features we wanted to deburr on this part. First is the outside holes. There's three radial half inch holes as well as a tapped NPT hole over here. And then there's quite a few ID features, some of which were frankly impossible to deburr before this toolpath, others would have just been a pain in the butt. Um, these two features here, we I don't know of a way we could have easily done. These features here I could have done, but would have been a lot of, of work. Um, and so I wanna show this deburr toolpath and just how easy it makes it. Uh, we're not looking for a chamfer here, although you could chamfer with it. What I'm looking for is truly just an edge break, getting rid of sharp edges that could uh, damage internals or cause problems downstream and so forth. The outside holes really couldn't be easier. 3D deburr, it is a manufacturing extension option. I've got a regular old Lakeshore carbide quarter inch chamfer tool under my second tab, geometry, change the edges to deburr from automatic to selection. I'll click one for right now and choose okay. There's some other deburring videos that have already been published by others and Autodesk. I'll put them in the links description. They cover really how cool this toolpath is, uh, but most of them seem to approach simple parts or automatically programming lots of deburring of, of features, which is great, but I'm looking for more rifle shot focused features. So we get an error, let's see what happened. Change it from three to five axis and there we go. Click simulate. We'll talk about more about simulation in a second because it really matters here both to confirm you've got the right feature profile that you wanted, the cam profile, but also more around simulating collisions with the tool, the shank, the holder, your work holding, et cetera. Hit play. So that simulation is, is fine, but you'll notice that the tool moved and the part didn't. And if you've run a five axis machine, you know that's kind of backward and we can fix that now. So change the viewpoint from model to tool, uh, and it makes a little bit more sense. It's still not the full-blown simulation of, with the machine, which we'll get to in a second as well. This tells me that even though it's close, we'll be okay. So it's really just that simple. Um, there wasn't a great way to edge break or chamfer three axis features like this before. There were some hacks that you could do, uh, especially if you leverage some offset uh, CAD data and sketches with trace uh, and so forth, but they, they weren't great. And this is simple. Like when I think about how we run our hands-on CNC training classes here, both on three axis and five axis, it's fun to be creative enough and clever enough to find really cool shortcuts uh, or tricks to things, but it's even nicer when it just works with one or two clicks like this. Let's tackle these ID features. I'm treating these as occluded features because the part I'm trying to edge break isn't really present if you were looking straight down from the part, uh, top view or the spindle view. Now, obviously on a five axis, we can tip it over, so you could argue it's not truly an occluded feature, but we are gonna be using a lollipop end mill from Harvey Tools to do this. 3D deburr, select our tool. I've already got it as tool 135 in my tool library infusion, but you can download the Harvey libraries. We'll put a link in the description as well, um, which we'd already done. And you can then just go in and search for it, E34612. They pop up. The only pro tip I'd remind you is after you use the search field infusion, when you go back into your part view, you'll need to clear out your search. It's really a filter, if you will, to view your, your uh, tools again. So pick tool 135. Same thing, change it from edges uh, automatic to selection. I'll pick this edge right here. It's just too cool. Machining axis, five axis, click okay. 
a lot of times, even if I have more things I wanna uh, tweak or adjust on that toolpath, I click okay uh, early on because it confirms I at least have a good toolpath started. And if I accidentally hit escape, you lose all the work you've done. So by hitting okay, uh, we at least create this, the part, uh, the cam operation, and now I can go back and edit it. Uh, but before we edit it, let's actually just take a quick look at that. And now I'll go ahead and try machine uh, or simulate with machine. This works because we've got the Haas UMC 500 uh, as the machine config, which is starting to be the gateway to what could be a really cool um, change in how we think about cam. Uh, it's probably better suited for a, another video and a longer discussion about uh, all the potentials here of, of bi-directional communication. For example, when you plug in a new Haas machine, uh, the Haas machine itself could be telling Fusion, okay, they've got a fourth axis and it's set up in this orientation, or the machine has this spindle, so don't program any toolpaths over that spindle. You get the idea. Nevertheless, this makes it really nice for um, getting the sort of visual, like just pleasing simulation of, of seeing what you want to, you're looking for, but then also the uh, confidence and verification that you've got the correct tool, the correct stick out, the correct holder, etc. I'll hit play. I, you'll notice we'll get some collisions here, partly just because the in-process stock is off. Uh, when we're doing the screen recording software, it's really taxing to turning off IPS tends to help. Um, that, I say that hesitantly because collisions are very valuable and matter here, so I wish I could show it without them. Um, but you get an idea from looking at this toolpath as we can scrub through it here, that it's doing what we want. It is tipped over to a pretty extreme angle, and we actually have really good control over that. We edit this toolpath, there are two major modes in this um, five-axis version. We're on the lead mode, which leads it for, tips it forward, basically. So if you think about walking down uh, a sidewalk, if you tipped forward or lead it, that's sort of what that represents. Um, I'm going to change it to the tilt to, to Z, which if I can get the hover to pop up here. Show that it tries to confine it within a cone. Um, but before I do that, I'll show a quick way that you can get a better idea for five axis toolpaths of what it's doing. Uh, we kind of have a hint because of the lead in and the lead out that we can see that the part's really tipped over. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean it holds that angle throughout the cut. But if you go to your toolpath visibility and turn on tool axes, we now see these uh, blue lines that represent the, the vector or the axis that that tool's cutting in. And you can see how tipped over it is. I'll duplicate this toolpath. We'll edit the second one to be a tilt to Z and just click OK. What that really is meaning is it's tipped, uh, I believe, straight up and down, but however much it needs to tip over to avoid the shank or holder collision subject to the, or shaft and holder, I should say, subject to the information right here, which I normally don't change on the uh, first tab of the cam operation. And now, take a look, those blue lines are way uh, higher oriented uh, as compared to the original operation. You can simulate that. Again, our part has far less five axis tip over here, which all else equal I usually like. Um, five axis is fun, but if I don't have to use five axis, don't. And the further you're tipping the machine over, I would argue there's potentially more crash risk, um, certainly can be scarier to run, uh, and all else equal, the further you move out or away from your center of rotation, the more risk there is for errors and so forth, or, or geometric uh, kinematic errors. But this is also just simple. The only thing I'd add is in this situation, we are cutting more with the top of the tool. Not necessarily a bad thing, but these aren't the cheapest cutters, so you do want to keep that in mind. Uh, you know, it's kind of one of those, there's no perfect answer, but I do, uh, I do like the results I'm getting. I usually don't leave the show base option checked because it's cool to give you an overall reference, but it's a lot easier to simulate it this way. You can even make that transparent. And then I can come in here, I can scrub through the toolpath, and that can really help you kind of look at, okay, so what's really happening here? I zoom in. I can see I'm coming down, I'm moving into the part. In fact, if you really want to get granular, you can switch your uh, tab on the top to info and I can see, okay, I'm still in a plunge mode. I'm in cutting mode here, coming through. I'm breaking that edge. You can see the sphere actually intersect, which is kind of cool. Comes down and then leads out. Almost looks like I'm cutting the bottom there. Like so, great. Lastly, these lines along the bottom, Again, you could use a 45 degree tool, but you'd have to, um, I had troubles doing this with the chamfer toolpath, which the chamfer toolpath would automatically recognize 
um, how it needs to move the tool path in to not hit the side walls or the ends on either side. Didn't work great. And you could do 2D contour with offsets, but it's just a pain in the butt. You're asking for problems. Deburr made it so easy. Deburr, same tool. Change from automatic to selection. I'll pick those two edges. Let's say we only want to do a five foul edge break on them. And we can leave this in three axis because we don't need any five axis tip on it. Click OK. And we get a tool path that calculates the leads in correctly and it doesn't take very long to cut. Ignore those uh, tool axis lines. They are super helpful here. I just like so, it's awesome. We do, when we're done with these, tend to right click and protect them. Uh, that does two things. It avoids them having to be regenerated because sometimes these tool paths can take a while to generate and it lets other folks in the shop that don't have the extensions uh, still post those uh, tool paths out. They can't edit them unless they have the extension, but you can still use them uh, if they've already been generated and protected, which is great. Very quick side note though, one of the things that's so exciting about this tool path is not that it works, not just that it works great and is frankly very easy to use and very powerful and capable, but it's from ModuleWorks. So Fusion decided or Autodesk decided to license ModuleWorks. If you haven't heard of ModuleWorks, I don't blame you, but take a look. It is crazy how many different software and cam companies use ModuleWorks for their cam. You have the big ones like the household name guys, all use module works to create their tool paths. Fusion now has that, and so you're going to start seeing a lot more four axis tool path, uh, roughing strategies, five axis tool path strategies that just seamlessly roll into Fusion uh, that are really going to up Fusion's capability and game in a really exciting way. And for me, what I love about it is that it's just still so easy to use. I don't have a ton of experience at this point uh, in these days using other software like the Master Cams, like the Part Maker, Power Mill, Hyper Mill NX, but from talking with friends, there's no question that the ability to get toolpaths created and posted here is really fast. Simulation has really upped their game, especially since Autodesk bought Camplete. That's one reason why we're seeing this machine simulation right now. And for us, when we're bringing new folks on board, it seemed more likely that they already know Fusion or have seen it through the 3D printing world, uh, which just helps everything go a little bit smoother. Um, speaking of good news though, I gotta share with you guys, take a look at who's next to me. For you guys that have followed the channel over the years, uh, I don't even want to talk about losing Judd last year because that kicked my butt. Uh, but last week we picked up a new puppy. So, Moma, you want to say hi? Moma, you want to say hi? She's taking a nap. Say hi, buddy. You want to say hi? As always, folks, hope you learned something. Hope you enjoyed. Take care. See you soon.